as well the earth gave way on a night when we were here to find it. I was in the graveyard after midday, and all was snug and tight then. Could have been awkward enough if the hole stood open through the day for any passerby to light on. I thought we should have a fall there ere long, but with this drought parched in the ground and the trampling at the edge when we move the side stone. A uh, gravestone and a few spades of earth will soon hide the hole from prying eyes. They say Matthew's gone to Dorchester to speak with Judge Barentine. He's making out that the arm of the law is weak in these parts against the contrabanders and should be strengthened with a few good hangings. The devil send Maskew to meet me one night. I'll give him a pistol's mouth to look down and spoil his face for him. No, thou wilt not. None shall lay a hand on Maskew but I. There's a boy of Trenchard's that I mistrust. He's forever wandering in the graveyard. And I've seen him scores of times sitting on this here tomb and looking out to see... You're right. Many's the time as I have watched the manor to see Maskew safe at home. I've seen the boy scanning that house as if his life depended on it. It's a false sense. The boy's well enough. The graveyard has a fine view of the sea. It is the sea you love no more. I would he were my son. He's David's age. You make a good seaman later on. The night is spent. That's away. days of our age are threescore years and ten, and though man be so strong that they come to fourscore years, yet is their strength then but labour and sorrow. So soon passeth it away, and we are gone. Miss Arnold! 
John was not in school this morning. Is he ill, Miss Arnold? I cannot say how he is, Mr. Glennie. For he has run off, I know not where. But as he makes his bed, so must he lie on it. And if he has run away for his pleasure, he may stay away for mine. His father did the same to my poor sister Martha. His aunt thinks he's run off and good riddance. But I must say, it doesn't seem like him. No. But then there's no telling of lads of his age. Well, yes. Perhaps he has gone and is even now seeking a ship in Poole or Weymouth. God save us. The Mahoons are stirring. I'll give all your drink, Elsevier. It was passing the graveyard, and I had heard such a screaming and yelling coming from the Mahoons' monument. It was as Cracky Jones told us. Blackbeard, calling up his lost Mahoons to search for his treasure. I won't tell Elsevier. I didn't mean to spy. Shh, easy lad. Just down here will harm you. Here, drink this. How did you find me? When saying Tewkesbury came into the wine out last night, babbling about screams and wailing voices coming from the churchyard, I guessed that some poor soul had got stuck in the vault. It happened once before, years ago. A lad called Cracky Jones. And there we found you and brought you back here to the wine lot. So, you've seen the inside of our bond cellar. Tis well Elsevier and I found thee, for if some of the ringstave landers knew, they might have ugly ways to stop thee from telling. I'd never tell. We know that, John. He that refraineth his lips is wise. I, I feel as though I've had a fever. How long was I in the vault? A day and a night. You took a powerful dose of French cognac. It was that as did for you and made you feel feverish. My aunt will be angry. Aye, that she is. The Reverend Glennie called on her to inquire after your health. We couldn't tell that you were here safe and sound, or we would have had to answer awkward questions as to why you were here and not safe at home. She looks not to see you again this side of manhood. I shall say that I fell and hit my head and can remember nothing. <laughs> I she might believe that. Yeah. Pigs might take to the air. Sleep, John. There's time enough to think of what to say to Miss Arnold. Yes. Time enough. Well, my fine young runaway. Hello, Aunt Jane. I'm sorry if I worried you. Worried me? Kept me from my bed, fretting after thee. <laughs> no, master, you did none of these. Saxon Ratsy was here, telling such a tale of you being found half dead and famished and not remembering who or where you came from. Well, yes, that's what happened. Well, I've heard such tales before from men who are tavern lounges. Your father told my poor sister such tales when he was away with the landers. It seems you are going the way of him. 
If you like the Why Not Inn so well, you can go back there. John? My aunt wants no more of me, Elsevier. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere? You have the why not? It was David's home, now it shall be yours. You cruel man up here. Repent, and it be all too late. Oh, it's a dreadful sentence for you. For God will surely avenge my fate. Who penned these verses? Why, the Reverend Mr. Glennie, magistrate. And it came to pass. And as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? Magistrate Maskill, good day to you. Do not hold out your hand to me, you must have spit upon it. Just like your snivelling cant, to write sweet psalms for smuggling rogues. And try to frighten honest men with your judgments. I do not understand. You have penned verses to the memory of David Block. Saxton Ratsey is at this moment setting up the stone for all the world to see. Well, I warn you, these lines slander me. If that stone remains in the graveyard, I shall have it smashed. Come, Grace, I will not have thee taught by a psalm singing hypocrite that calls thy father murderer. I can neither turn the stone out myself nor stop you from turning it out if you so mind. But if you do this thing and dishonor the graveyard, there is one stronger than either you or I that must be reckoned with. Take that for an unmannerly parson, for I will not soil my fist with your mealy chops. Grace. They're here. Set the table down. We all know it is no more than a formality, but we must observe custom. The Moon Arms Tavern, known as the Why Not Tavern. I invite the company to make an offer of rent for this desirable property and for the paddocks and 16 acres of grazing land called Moon's Lease under a five-year lease. As is the custom when land or lease is put up to bidding, a pin will be placed in a candle. As long as the pin holds firm, it is open to anyone to raise the bid for the property in question. For the last 20 years, the annual rent for this property has been £12. Master Block, what is your offer this year? £12. Of course. Now we wait. Good day, Bailiff. Trust your wheel? Good day, Maskew. Yes, nicely, thank you. You're no welcome visitor in my house. And I had sooner see your back 
and see your face. But sit at this table, you shall not. Listen, will you turn to ask sitting room of me, Mr. Block? Come, sirs, let us have no brawling here. This gentleman's a magistrate and a friend of mine. Tell him to have the carriage brought round. The thing will be out in a minute and will save time. I offer thirteen pound a year for the end. I offer twenty pounds. Twenty-one. Kind, sir, I warn you not to trifle. I have no time for April fooling. Twenty-one pound. Mark it, sir. Thirty pounds. Thirty-one. Forty pounds. Forty-one. Fifty pounds. Good, sirs, why do you... Fifty-one. Sixty. Sixty-one. Seventy. Seventy-one. Eighty. Eighty-one. Ninety. Ninety-one. Are you mad, sirs? A new master block. Save your breath and spare your money. If this gentleman must become innkeeper at any price, well, let him have the place. I will give thee the mermaid at Bridport with ten times the trade of this. One hundred pounds. One hundred twenty. One hundred thirty. One hundred forty. One hundred fifty. One hundred sixty. One hundred seventy. One hundred eighty. One hundred ninety. Two hundred. And... I congratulate you, sir. You're the landlord of the poorest pothouse in the duchy at two hundred pounds a year. Well, gentlemen, there seems to be some private matter here that I will not pry into. If you wish to change your mind, I shall not stand in your way. No, no. Business is business, Mr. Bill. Well, thank you to Mac the lease out to me now. And on May Day, place me in possession. So be it, then. Fill in the figures, Mr. Scrutton, and let us away. Come on. Come, Master Block. There's time enough before May Day to think what we shall do. So let's take a cup of tea. And I'll play your game of back game. Life is like a game of hazard. And surely none ever flung worse throws or made so little of them as I. Signal, man, signal! What signal, sir? Is there any signal from along the cliff top? Signal, sir. All safe. Word has come from the shippers that we must take a cargo. But with this devil mask you prowling around, I dare not risk the job on Moonfleet Beach. So I've told the Bonaventure to show her nose in the bay, so as mask you can see her. But instead of waiting any offer, she'll make straight down the channel to Hoare Head, and we'll be there at five that morning. So what ails you, lad? Thought I heard someone at the door. Did you not feel a draught, as if it were open? Oh, it was but the wind that blew the door open. Come fill me a glass of Ararat milk. Come on for thyself. There's a fortnight yet to run, and you and I shall be cast adrift from our moorings. It's a cruel thing to see the doors of this house close on me.
will now announce that we are leaving Moonfleet. I would fain fit myself. But then who will left to leave the old folk to their last homes, for the dead do not bury their dead these days? Well, that need not keep you, Master Rexy. But soon find others to fill your place. Hey, child. You might find him to dig a grave. But who'll toss the mold when Parson Glennie gives the earth to earth? It takes a bit of knowledge to make you wrap kindly on the coffin lid. Remember how I said that when this man's day of reckoning was come, it was I would reckon with him. And had you promised to it? So bind him hand and foot, and leave him here with me. And then get on your way. There's no time to lose. There'll soon be light. John, stay here with me. I'll need your help later. Unloose me, you villain! I'm a magistrate of this county. If you do not, I'll have you gibbeted on this cliff door. Talk not to me of gibbets. Thou shalt see no more men hanged. Three weeks ago thou satst under my roof, watching the flame burn down until the pin dropped, and gave thee right to turn me out from my old home. And now again this morning, thou shalt watch the flame burn down, and when the pin drops, I shall kill thee with as little thought as I would kill vermin. an only daughter, a young girl, with none but me to guard her. Would you rob a young girl of her only help and cast her on the world? 
Will you have them bring me back to a bloody corpse? Had not I an only son? And was not he brought to me a bloody corpse? Whose pistol was it that flashed in his face and took away his life? This very same that shall flash in thine. So make what peace you may with God, for you have little time. Elzevir, he's right. We should think of Grace and what this will mean to her. Oh, thou hast a warm heart, lad. It is for that I like thee. But there's no way out. It's his life against the lives of our men. Yes, and your life too. They left him in my hands. Am I now to turn him loose again to hang them all? No. It cannot be. Away, John, away! Spare me, Mr. Block, I beg of you. I can give you money. Uh, a thousand, five thousand, ten, ten thousand pounds if you set me free. I'll give you back the why not. I'll leave Boot Fleet. Elzevir, don't shoot. Yield the king's name. Shoot, shoot, or I'm a dead man. Shoot. Ah. Run. Up the cliff! 